Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Waterway Free Methodist Church family and Pastor Brad. We said to be with you this morning. Welcome. If you're visiting online or here in person, good to have you. Before we worship, let's pray. God, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are holy. We praise you, Lord. Be with us this morning, Lord, as we just spend time in your presence. As we listen to you. Amen. We praise you. Amen. Amen.
wait for our drummer. Hold on. <laughs> paying down the building. Uh, that is awesome. Sunday school for all ages on Sunday morning, 930. We had a great class today talking about baptism and I'll give you some more information on that. Fruits of the Spirit, uh, they're still going around, I think. And uh, But today, today, today is the day. <laughs> today is the day. The purple team is taking you down. <laughs> Little trash talk. It's okay. <laughs> My team, purple team, purple and black, I believe, purple and black, is going after the prize. $35,000, right? Or $35,000, Brett? Or is it $35? I, I Maybe it's $35. Prize money for the winners. I think the top three, prize money, little obstacle course, uh, we have hot dogs and uh, stuff to share uh, for church, right after church. We have a hot dog. Brad will give you the instructions for the episode course. We've got stopwatches, timers, all kinds of things. Uh, teams need to be teams of three or four, okay? So if you don't have enough or need another one, adopt somebody, find somebody, recruit somebody, make up a team. That's all you need, make up a team and go for the prizes and there's prize money available right after church if you don't if you're not on a team and you just want to watch for a good laugh and video and win ten thousand dollars videoing the obstacle course you can do that also just share the money with the church no you keep it it's all right so right after church uh obstacle course family fun time together doing that uh monday uh food pantry church is going on uh dave is doing some brats so if you're not doing anything for lunch tomorrow show up and be part of food pantry church uh, Tam Tammy, we're all set. We can talk afterwards. Uh, food Pantry Church tomorrow, 11 to 1. Uh, and then Pickleball at 6. 
if I can still move after eating all day. Uh, next Sunday, baptism. We're doing baby dedication as well. And baptism next Sunday morning, baby dedication. Some of the ones that are getting baptized are going to share their testimony. And then we're going down to the river and following the morning worship and doing that. Uh, Michigan Adventure, the kids are going to Michigan Adventure, coming up to see Brad. He's got all the information on that as well. Uh, just to update, uh, Mr. Cobb did have surgery. He's up, he's walking, he's alive, all those things, probably watching online. And uh, we just need to continue to pray for him and Kim. Maybe that's why Kim's here. Uh, <laughs> she needed a break, and so great having uh, mm -hmm. Kim with us today as well. Let's throw our memory verse together. Do you not realize? Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Kids Club. Go Bike. back to that. Go back to that, man. Bike parade. Yes. Bike parade. Games and food Wednesday, six to eight. Don't forget that, kids, because you'll have a blast. You've been waiting all summer for it. There you go. Thank you.
Son Jesus to die for us. Amen. So we will praise you no matter what we face car accidents, surgeries, procedures, whatever it is. We love you and we trust you. We will praise you no matter what. You got it. Father, whether it's a Dwayne recovering from hip surgery or Glenn's brother Kenneth as he as they try to figure out what's going on and uh, get him stabilized and all those things and we, and we pray for Neil uh, McFadden as he's facing more surgeries and more radiation and more treatments and the pain is excruciating so Father we pray for relief that you would come alongside of him and love him and carry and walk with him and that through it all we will praise the Lord it's so good having Austin with us today. Thank you, Father, for protecting and watching over him. And he's going to be stateside. And Father, we just pray that you continue to use him and walk with him day by day. And, and Wraith is getting ready to graduate this week. And we thank you for that. And so, Father, we thank you for our men and women that serve in the military. So we can worship today in freedom. We don't have to worry about someone busting in and like other places of the world. Thank you for our missionaries that share the good news of the gospel. Give them the boldness to do that very thing, to proclaim the good news of Jesus. But Father, today, we ask that you be with us, that your scriptures would speak to us, you would challenge us, and we would run the race that you have marked out before us. You would give us wisdom, guidance, comfort, strength, and we would praise you no matter what tomorrow brings. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. The children can be dismissed for junior church. Thank you, Perry, the worship team for worship today. Uh, it's what we would have had last week at Glad Peach, but uh, we just want to do it this week. So thank you, guys. A disciple of Jesus is a learner, learning to love like Jesus, walk like Jesus, live like Jesus, be like Jesus to others. That's what we're striving for. That's what we want to do. Uh, that's what God calls us to do as well. Everyone wants to win. Everyone wants to win when it comes to the game. No one starts out the game hoping I'm gonna lose. No one on the softball team or baseball team says, I'm gonna strike out every time and that's good. No, they wanna at least get hit by a pitch or a walk or hit the ball or butt or do something. No one starts out wanting to lose. Everyone wants to win. Sometimes we even think about winning at all cost. Maybe cheating, kicking, biting, whatever it takes. To what extreme would you go to just to win? What corner would you cut? What would you do just to win? Let me just give you a couple of examples and see if you can help me figure out who these people might be. Who would ever let the air out of the football just a little bit so they could throw it a little bit better? Huh? Who would ever do that? 
Who would ever throw a game to win a bet who's still not in the Baseball Hall of Fame? Hmm. Who would ever pay the referees to get a call? At what cost would you go just to win? Who would ever take a skater out in a dark alley so they couldn't skate the next event? Who would ever bite someone's ear just to win? <laughs> you guys laugh. People go to far extreme <laughs> cases just to win. At what cost would you go to just to win? Well, let's kind of twist the question just a little bit and think of it in this view. To what extent would you go to win in your marriage? To what extent would you go to win in a relationship with your son or daughter or mom or dad? To what extent would you go to win in relationships with others. To what extent would you go to to improve your relationship with Jesus? Hmm? To what extent would you go to, to read your Bible more, uh, to minister, to win at ministering and sharing Jesus? To what extent would you go to, to bring harmony and peace in a church, in a church body? To what extent would you go just to win? To what extent would you go to just be a disciple of Jesus or to get to heaven? See, we think about going to that extent and doing bad things, but there's also the good side of that. How far would you go to get where God's called you to get? I have some examples for you. Uh, turn with me to Acts chapter 20. I think I put mostly scriptures in your bulletin. If you don't have a Bible, there's one in the pew. But I think most of them are in the bulletin as well. Acts chapter 20. This is Paul writing the extent that he'd go to. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. Only My only aim is to finish the race. Finish the race. That's my only aim. To complete the task that God has set before me. To testify the good news of God's grace. Paul knew, if you jump back to verse 23, Paul knew through the Holy Spirit that he was going to face suffering. He was going to face imprisonment. Paul knew he was going to face hardship, was facing the next city he was going to. But Paul knew that, but he still went. He only had one aim to finish the race, to complete the task that Jesus had set out before him, just to win, to testify the good news, amazing grace. Uh, New Living Translation talks about it in this way. Consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race. But if my life is worth nothing to me unless I finish the work, the assignment that Jesus has set out for me to do, and that is to tell others. If you knew going to the next city and telling somebody about Jesus would cause you imprisonment, would you go? If you knew that going to the next place, going to that next job site, going to that next thing, doing that next class, whatever it may be, knew that that would end up in punishment and suffering, would you still go? Paul said, it doesn't matter, I gotta go. My assignment is to go, I have to go. So to win, Paul had to go to win what God has called him to do. <laughs> Second Timothy two, uh, or yeah, Second Timothy four, actually, uh, he goes on. As for me, my life has already been poured out as offering to God. Uh, a time of my death is near. Verse 7, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race, and I have remained faithful. Finishing the race. We've all seen stories. We've all seen events that happened in the Olympics a couple of years ago where the one runner falls down after a long marathon, and someone stops along the way and picks him up and helps him across the line. Helps him across to finish the race. Beaten and imprisonment, but Paul didn't give up. He didn't quit the race. He didn't say, oh, I'm done. No, what did he say? I fight the good fight. More than just trying until I give up. It is trying to get better. Keep on going. Fight the good race. Finish the race. Never giving up. Never quitting. I think I showed the video clip from Facing the Giants. The guy does a death crawl. He puts a bandana around his eyes so he can't see. And he carries a kid 100 yards on his back. Not giving up. And the coach is saying, come on, come on, you can do it. Not giving up. Not quitting. 
That's what Paul's talking about. Remaining faithful, not losing faith, not losing sight of what God has, not blaming. Hey, I'm in prison. I can't do that anymore. Hey, I, I, they're going to beat me. I can't do that. I, I'm going to yeah. not using any excuses. Not saying this happened in my life. I can't, can't do ministry. No, not doing any of that. Remaining faithful, trusting God's plan, going all the way. How are you fighting the good faith? How are you finishing the race? How are you at remaining faithful along the way? Why? Why would you do that? Why would anybody do that? Why would we fight a good fight and not give up? Why would we finish the race and not quit? Why would we remain faithful? What is the prize? What is the prize that I'm fighting for? What is the thing that we're all looking forward to. 1 Corinthians 9. Do you not realize that everyone runs a race, but only one person gets a prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win the prize that will not fade away. But we do it for the eternal prize. I'm sorry, they, they do it to win a prize that will fade away, but we do it for eternal prize. Our heavenly home. That's the prize. So I run with purpose on every step. I'm not shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training to do what I should. Otherwise, I fear after I preach to others, I myself might be disqualified. We put so much effort in earth winning the prize, winning the tournament, winning the, the baseball game, the basketball game, the football game, winning, winning, winning. We put so much emphasis that on that. But what about the real prize of heaven? What about winning that prize? What about getting to that point, getting the crown of righteousness that God has for you? What about that? And the word discipline, so often we use that word and, and we think it's a bad thing. Uh, I love this de definition of discipline. Discipline is the ability to choose what I want most over what I want now. What I want most is to have a chiseled body with just all kinds of muscles and look awesome. Next slide, please. <laughs> to look like this. <laughs> this is my, this is what I want most is to look like this. Next slide. But what I want right now is this snack. See, we want something most, but there's something in front of us that we want now. And discipline says, I want that more than this now. That's what discipline is. Discipline is realizing that there's something that I want down the road. And I'm going to have to work for it. I believe everyone is disciplined. Does anybody think they're not disciplined? Anybody? Anybody? No, everybody. Kevin? Kevin doesn't think he's disciplined. Okay, so let's try this, Kevin. Uh, so, like, during the work week, do you check your phone? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So you're disciplined enough to check your phone throughout the week? Yes. Do you brush your teeth, like, every day? Brush twice. A, you're disciplined to brush your teeth twice a day? <laughs> Sounds like you're just, do you wear shoes when you go on make calls? Mostly. Mostly, yeah. <laughs> so you're disciplined to dress up and wear shoes and things like that? When your car's almost to empty, running out of gas, are you disciplined enough to stop and get gas before it runs out? Only if there is. Only if it needs to. See, we're all disciplined and stuff, aren't we? We're all disciplined. The question is, what are we disciplined in? What are those habits that we do every day of our life? Are we disciplined enough to read the Bible? Are those part of our habits? Are we disciplined enough to not overeat or undereat or whatever the case may be? I believe that we are all disciplined and we all have great habits and we have some very bad habits that we're not very disciplined and say no to. Everyone is disciplined. The question is, what are you disciplined in? Are you disciplined in reading your Bible, saying your prayers, uh, disciplined in exercising and being a disciple of Jesus? Are you disciplined enough to get off the couch? To work out? Are you disciplined enough to do something like that? Are you disciplined to make it part of your daily habit, your part of your routine? But you know what often stops us from being disciplined 
is there's things that slow us down. Those snacks get in our way. They entangle us is another way of saying that. Hebrews 12 says it like this. Therefore, since we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, and again, I always think of like the big house, of, sorry, George, the big house in, in Ann Arbor, a great cloud of witnesses, a, a big amphitheater, a great stadium, so to speak, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Let us throw off everything that hinders us, the sin so easily entangles us, and let us run with perseverance. The race that is marked up before us, fixing our eyes, on the perfecter of our faith, Jesus. Surrounded, watching, let us run with endurance. Throwing off everything that slows us down. And sometimes there's things that slow us down that are good for us, but we need to get rid of them. They entangle us. They keep us from running the race God has set out for us. Um, Jonah, come here. I was looking for a max and I didn't see him. Same right here, Jonah. We're gonna, Jonah and I are going to run a race. Ready? Jonah, first one to the tape. Ready? Who, who thinks Jonah's going to beat me? Everybody, right? <laughs> Jonah, stay right there. I forgot to tell you. See, in order for Jonah to run this race, there's a couple things that you don't know about Jonah. He's got some things in his life that entangle him, that slow him down. He's, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm gonna make up a sin, ready? Uh, Jonah stealing candy bars from the Wesco, okay? So this is his sin, candy bars from the Wesco, okay? And he keeps taking candy bars from the Wesco, don't drop that on my foot, or yours. That would really make a bad sound, okay? So we're gonna run a race, honey, Mark, let's take up. What happened, I beat you. What happened? See, thank you. See, so often we have things in our lives that entangle us, that slow us down, that keep us from running the race God has set out. And we have to get rid of them. We have to put those behind us and let them go. And so often, the reason why we have those things that entangle us, next slide please, is that uh, like a turtle swimming in the ocean, we don't see the net. We don't see the fishing line. We don't see that when all of a sudden we're caught in it. That's the web of sin that catches us. We think, oh, I can just swim through. I, I can get away with it. I, it, won't, it won't affect me, so to speak. And before long, we're entangled in that sin and caught. That's what Satan likes to do, is just get us like a cobweb, just a little bit, a little bit, and then all of a sudden it's, we're entangled in that sin. But we have to run the race. We have to let go of all those things that slow us down. And the other thing that, that really entangles us is that we take our eyes off of Jesus. Scripture says we've got to keep our eyes on Jesus. We have to know what the prize is at the end. It's seeing Jesus. We have to know that. And again, we go back to the definition of, of discipline is saying no to something now to get what we really want. And I don't know about you, but I really want to get to heaven. I want to win that prize. I want to win that prize. I don't want to win every race against Jonah. I don't care about that, but I want to see Jesus. That's the prize I'm looking forward to. So I run the race. Paul says, forgetting the past, looking forward. Getting rid of what's behind us and looking forward. Philippians 3, 13. Dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved, but I focus on one thing. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race, receiving the heavenly prize for which God is calling us to. Learning to press on, keep pressing on. Excuse me. Not reliving the past of our lives. But letting our past be that springboard that moves us towards the finish line. Forgetting the past and pressing on because I got a goal, and I got a direction, and I'm going to want to see Jesus, and I want to be at his feet, and I want to worship him. And so that's my goal. So the things of this world I have to say no to because that's what I'm heading for. That's where I want to fix my eyes. That's what I'm looking forward to.
Are your eyes fixed on Jesus? Have you made that decision that that's where you want to be? Or have you let the things of the world entangle you that's keeping you from getting where you want to be? Have you thrown off those sins that so easily entangle you? It keeps you from running from your full potential. Are you looking forward to the end of the race? Are you looking forward to that? This week, as you think about the race, I want you to think about, we're going to just take a minute. Is there one thing this week that you could do that would help you look to Jesus? Is there one thing that you could look, say, hey, I need to do this to get to there. There's one thing I need to do to get there. And then also, is there one thing I need to throw off, get rid of, so I can get to there? Is there something I need to let go of so I can get to there? And then, have you fixed your eyes on Jesus? I mean, really focused in. I mean, thinking about and, and seeing what Jesus has for you. He has so much. Paul must have been a runner. I mean, there's four or five analogies of running that he uses in the New Testament. He must have been a runner. I'm not a runner. My body's not designed to, to be a runner. But when it comes to running for Jesus, I got one goal. That's what I want to do. That's what I have to do. I need to fix my eyes on him. Let's just take a minute, bow your heads, ask Jesus, is there something you need to throw off so you can run more efficiently, more focused on him? Are your eyes fixed on him? Is there something that you need to do this week to run towards the finish line of heaven? Father, when it comes to winning, we all want to win the prize at heaven. That's our goal. That's where we want to go. So, Father, I pray that you'd help us to be disciplined in the things of you, disciplined in our time with you, disciplined in our worship of you, disciplined in our Bible time, dis discipline in our reading time, discipline in our prayer. Help us to be disciplined. I mean, we can be disciplined and brush our teeth twice a day. We can be disciplined and check our phone during work every day. We can be disciplined in so many things. But Father, when it comes to you, somehow we just settle for earthly stuff, the entanglement. So Father, this week, I pray that you'd help us to fix our eyes on Jesus, that you would help us to look to you. Help us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Like I said, you are all invited to join us for the obstacle course and eat and have a hot dog. And, and the just like and, and the best way to finish this sermon is with a song. Go ahead, run the song, please. Oh, yeah.